Okay, so I was talking you through the um, amended monster routine. I'm just going to put these away. And what I'm going to do is just respond to a teacher who wrote a question in the support group. And I love it when teachers ask questions because often the teachers think that they're the only person who has that issue or that question. And actually, often <laughs> there are so many teachers who just dare not ask because they don't want to look as if they don't know what they're doing, which is crazy because if we don't talk and share and co collaborate, you know, we're just, we're just not going to move forward. So the words um, that this child is struggling with is um, eight and height. So when they're looking at it on the, you know, on the decodable, on the poster, they can see that it's code mapped eight, eight. They know that's the word eight. Uh, they know that's height, height. And this code mapping, which is an SSP patented technique, shows the child where those sound picks are. So that it's three duck hands, mm, mm, mm. height, height. And this one we do for a concept, it's just to show them, okay, so the E-I-G-H represents what speech sound there, what phoneme there, what phoneme does it represent there? So he's perfectly, you know, I can see that he understands the concepts and that's the most important thing. So if you ask him to duck hand height, he'll go height, height, or eight, 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 um, etc. and he can recognise it. But when he's coming to actually spell it, he's often getting these E-I-G-H mixed up. So it's actually nothing to do with the decoding and encoding, sk and the decoding and encoding skills. It's just basically just like, you know, if you, if you kept saying a telephone number the wrong way round or your bank account number, if you kept getting it wrong, what your brain does is say, hold on, I can't remember, well, actually, which is the right one, which isn't it? So, I, so what, I, what I want you to do is a couple of things. First of all, I want you to um, have these words, so it's code mapped and not, that's what it looks like in a regular book, but that's to show the brain, well, you know, and he knows that already. So he's going to have these, not that big, but he's going to have these on his table all the time. Um, and what I want you to do is, first of all, you remember this, you know, this, um, what looks right. So you show him like eight. Put the letters in completely the wrong way round. Because all he's doing at the moment is you're just forgetting them. Um, have I missed anything out there? <laughs> so just put them in completely the wrong way round. Do it five times. And then just check with him. Uh, and just check, just say which... Any, are any of these, do any of these look wrong to your brain? And which one looks like it's an actual word? Now, I think this this um, student is straight away going to say it's this one, this is the word eight. Because I don't think there's anything prop wrong with the decoding and the encoding. I think it purely and simply is remembering the order. Because A, or I, here, has got four letters. And if you're a preppy, or a year one or whatever, that's still quite a, you know, that's that's four letters. And these are still, remember, these are squiggles. We've got 26 squiggles. So he, I think he's got the skills and concepts. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to let him do that so you can just, I want you to do that so you just, he tells you which is the right one. I'd be amazed if he didn't tell you which is the right one. But then you're just going to do the monster routine and we're just going to cement it for his brain. So... And he's doing that, decoding it every day on his coding poster anyway, and on his video. So what we're going to do is we're going to put out, now always with a word, put out at least two extra extra monsters that, or one extra monster that's got nothing to do with it. So we're going to put out, and it doesn't matter what order, we're actually going to put out monster, <sighs> monster A, monster T, monster I, and monster S. And those watching this and don't use SSP, the children actually do get very good at knowing the IPA, the phonetic symbols, but they don't use those. They just look at the monsters. So this monster says, this monster says A, this monster says T, this monster says I, this monster says T. So you're going to say to the child, right, we're going to do the monster routine. So let's do eight. So what do they do? They say the word eight. Uh, let's just see if it is a visual prompt. That'd be nice and easy, wouldn't it? Have we got an eight on there? <laughs> I can't actually remember if I have eight. Oh, we do. There it is. Okay, so let's do it as a proper monster routine. So there's the word eight. So he's going to choose it. Eight. Say it. Eight. Duck hands. Eight. Eight. Lines and numbers. He's going to say the sounds. Eight. 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 So he says the sounds as he's doing the numbers as well. So our preppies are doing that. You know, this isn't something. This is something at the beginning when they're first learning to form the numbers and whatever. It might be more complicated, but um, they've quickly learned how to do that. Okay, then the next thing is they're going to think which is the monster. Monster A, monster T. 
Okay, so monster A, monster T. Perfect. Play it. Eight, eight. Then what do we do? Move it up and we think, which is the picture for A? Now, I haven't put all the sound picks out, but if you did, you would have E I G H. You would have that whole thing out there, wouldn't you? But let's not do this for this because it's you only really need to do that when you're doing the sapkin ones. So eight. So he's going to do the A, which is the A in the word eight. Now, he can't remember it. He knows it's A. And if you show him this one, he'll tell you it's this one. But he just can't, he can't remember which is the order. So give him that visual. So we've got it there. Oh, he might have his coding poster out there. Let him have it. So A. Okay. And what he's going to do is keep going. Like that. And he's going to keep doing that until this becomes something that his brain practices over and over and it becomes natural. So we've got A. What's the picture for here? There it is. So we had eight, eight. Play it, eight, eight. Check it, eight, eight. Perfect. We write it five times and I haven't got my other board. But now this part is really important. So what he's going to do now, he's got to write it five times. Now he could just do it from that, but it's actually going to be easier if he uses his word. So he's got it there. So he knows it's eight, eight. But he's got to remember what the order of the letters are. And going E-I-G-H doesn't help at all. It's like these programs that go C-A-T, cat. You know, when you say the word cat, the phonemes are cat. So we want the brain to think cat at the same time as, as visually recognising the pictures of the sound. So when they're saying cat, they're thinking like that. So if they're doing, you know, um, king, k -i -ng. So the sound is the same, it's a different picture. A bit different picture of the sound. Okay, so he's going to do it five times, writing it out, and he's got it there. A t eight, and it doesn't matter if there's a slight, like, slight space there. It's just because the brain is saying, okay, that's one part, that's another part. Eight eight a t eight a t eight a t eight. A, and he does it five times. A, t, eight, 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 eight. And then you might say, oh, can you try it on your own? Can you try it without looking? See if you can cover it over and see if you can. If you can't, turn it over, do it again. What we're doing is he's got the skills and concepts of decoding and encoding, which is brilliant because they're the most difficult parts. All he's doing at the moment is just his brain can't remember that. The same as if I ask you to memorise... A telephone number. It doesn't mean you can't add, add. It doesn't mean you can't add and take away. It just means you can't remember the numbers. So let's give the brain the way to remember the numbers, so that then a week later, if that, and you say write eight, he'll actually doesn't have to have anything there because his mind can recall that. What were the shapes? And that's what the brain does because the brain's amazing. So we've got eight, eight, and then I do exactly the same with height. Show the brain the word first. <sighs> Height, height, there it is, not code map. So they're just a squiggle of letters, but that shows the brain. Okay, picture, picture, picture. Height, height. Okay, so let's do it. Height, let's duck hand it. Height, height. This is the difficult thing for the brain if you're dyslexic. Height, height, and why the monster repeat routine is so important. Height, height. So we've only got three phonemes. Height, height, which are the monsters? I, t, oh, I forgot something on the last one. I'll show you in a minute. Height, height. What are we going to do? What's the picture? Oh, let me have a look because it's there. I don't have to recall it. I know it. It's there. I, where's the picture for I? But even though it's the same as the other one, now his brain, brain isn't saying A. Now his brain is saying I. I, t. Because we just checked, so we've got the word. Height, height, woohoo! Now we're going to write it five times. Let's have it out there. I, t, height. 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 Height, 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 height. Can I do it on my own? Let me have a go. Huh. 
Oh, I can't remember what was that first little bit. Let me turn it over, remember? Oh, yes, it was E. I. Tight. And just keep practicing, but have these on their table. If these are the two words that you just, you know, whilst we're doing the coding poster, and this is not, this is not because all we want them to do is to just learn these words. This is because they're using the sound picks they're learning in real words. <laughs> that they then do with real sentences at the back. One, two, three, four. Wow, now do you speedy decoding sentences? The ant is on the tab because he is hot. The ant sits on the hot sand up cold drink. Sits on the hot sand with a cold drink. Have you done them all? Are you reading? Oh, sorry, you're reading them and holding them up. That's a good idea. Ch or k or uh, what makes the uh sound? What makes the uh in chocolate? Chocolate. Is it the A? Uh, chocolate. I think it's the A. Yes. Yes, it's the A. I and the E makes E. Yes, cookies. Yes. I'm doing a lot. The um, speech and frog didn't pee out the sat. Oh, did he? The man and the dog in the gap. In the gap. The man and the dog sat in the gap. Another, the speech and frog did eat it. So it brings it all together so it's logical for the brain. And the same as the high frequency words, all code mapped. Okay, so. The thing which I forgot to say before was, of course, that after you've actually done this, ask the child, can you see the picture of in the word height in the cloud? Can you see the word, can you see the sound pic for I in the I cloud? Can you see the E-I-G-H? Yay! Can you see the picture for T in the word height? Yay! So you're reinforcing, because every time they look at this, they're looking at it and it's just reinforcing and often children, especially really, um, a lot of the children will then want to learn more and more and more. So you might just be doing one particular sound pick for I, but they're going to look at them and say, oh, what are they? Are you? Yeah, yes, and that one's and roll. Oh. And in the wrong cloud, it has So that's an owl, like cow. Yeah, and that's, and that's an owl, like... Their brains just love it because you're you know you're giving them more than you're teaching um yes so i hope that helps anyway and like i say ssp teachers please ask me anything like you know i <laughs> i work 24 7 that's what i'm there for that's why you join the support group it's so that you can actually ask a question and i answer it and usually if it's something i think is going to help other people i'll do your video because it's far easier to understand visually which is why we do the same with our kids thanks for watching